Breaking physics news, cold fusion is real. Okay, it's not breaking news at all. We've known about it since the 50s, and it's also not practical because it requires muons. In fact, it's called muon catalyzed fusion, and I want to tell you about it. First, a crash course on muons. You remember electrons from high school, the negatively charged bits that orbit the center of atoms? Muons are like their heavyset cousins. They're identical in every way to electrons, except they're 207 times heavier. They also don't last long. They decay into an electron, a neutrino, and an antineutrino in about 2.2 microseconds, so they're pretty fleeting. Nonetheless, their mass gives them an advantage. See, because they're 207 times heavier than an electron, if you form a muonic hydrogen atom, which is a hydrogen atom that has a muon instead of an electron, the atom ends up 207 times smaller than it would be otherwise. One way to see this is that the size of an atom is approximately the size of a circle whose circumference is one full wavelength of the particle doing the orbiting at the required speed so it doesn't fall in. Because we're doing quantum mechanics, the wavelength is related to the momentum, meaning the size will end up depending on the mass, in this case, inversely so. And that means that if we replace an electron with a muon, the atom gets 207 times smaller. So why does that matter? Well, if the atoms are 207 times smaller than the nuclei of, say, two hydrogen atoms and a hydrogen molecule, we'll be much closer together if you replace the electrons with muons. And that's handy for fusion. In reality, we don't use typical hydrogen because it's a bit harder to fuse. Instead, you take a deuterium-tritium ion. For those who don't know, deuterium and tritium are like hydrogen, but they have one and two more neutrons respectively, so they're quite a bit heavier. They also want to fuse more easily, and they give off more energy when they do so. So if you have a deuterium and tritium nucleus bound together by a muon, well then it'll be very easy for them to fuse simply by being near each other, no obscenely high pressure or temperature required. And that's great, because with just an electron between the nuclei, it'll take about 10 to the 24 years for even a single fusion event to have a chance of occurring. But if you just get those nuclei 200 times closer together, the deuterium and tritium nuclei will fuse in about a trillionth of a second, essentially making it guaranteed once the muonic molecule forms. So we've solved it then, right? Free energy for everyone, fusion is done? Well, not quite. See, there's an issue. Muons are hard to make, and they're hard to keep using. In order to make muon-catalyzed fusion worth it, you basically need to have a single muon catalyze on the order of 500 fusion events, because that would release roughly as much energy as it takes to create the muon in the first place. The trouble is, there's roughly a 1 in 300 chance of the muon being lost during the fusion event by being captured by the combined nucleus. This is called the alpha sticking problem. And if that happens, you can't reuse the muon, so it's gone. And unfortunately, this seems like a problem that can't be solved. There are some people who are trying to develop workarounds, but I'm not sure how promising it is. So we will likely have to wait for conventional hot fusion. Sorry to burst your bubble.